Uh, Thomas in London, how are you? Hi, I'm a Christian. I'm from London, and I believe in Jesus and all that stuff. And I'm not happy with what you did to Kenny on the last show. I thought that you cut him off, and it doesn't look good on you because it looks like you were trying to block him from his argument. Yeah, I already, I already apologize. I, I partially agree with you. Um, although, to be fair, um, I think it, I think Kenny pretty much called to to preach, and it was difficult to, uh, that he didn't understand that not only could he not make the case that he thought he could make, um, but that it wouldn't have have done him any good towards his arguments as well. And Kenny's welcome to call back, and, and I'll apologize to him in person. But uh, all, all I mean is that if you if you want to make him do that on email, that's okay because it's long. But what I mean is if you cut him off and then the rest of the show is all atheists, it looks pretty bad because the one call that was going to challenge you, you cut that off, and then the rest is just preaching to the choir. Sure, and, and to be fair, um, you'll be interested to know that uh, we've specifically set aside two of the four lines to make sure that we get theistic callers because we've been we're, we're not fans at all of having nothing but atheists call in. That said, um, I was not remotely about to be challenged. Uh, when somebody claims that they can demonstrate the authorship of the Gospels, when the entire collection of New Testament scholars from within Christendom and without are in a consensus agreement that without the autographs and with nothing more than uh, church kind of uh, history uh, attributing names to these, that it simply cannot be done, um, then a caller's just kind of wasting time. I mean, it, it would almost be like somebody um, calling in to say that, that, they could, that they had scientific evidence for ESP, but they didn't have any actual data or tests or studies. They just felt that they could demonstrate it. But I, did, you have, did you have a question or a comment outside yeah, I want of Kenny? To know where you think that, well, first of all, I wanted to say that we don't have eyewitness accounts for a lot of historical events. Like if you look sure. at Alexander the Great, we don't, we, I, I assume you believe Alexander the Great took over the world um, when he was 30 years old, but you don't have any eyewitness accounts of that. So you're being a bit biased there, don't you think? Um, my my requirement isn't anything about eyewitness accounts um, because here's the thing. You can go right now and find somebody who claims to have been abducted by aliens and you can get an eyewitness account direct from that individual. Does that mean that what they're claiming is true? Does it mean it's not true? No, it doesn't, but the burden of proof is on those who are claiming that it is true. And when you talk about whether or not Alexander the Great existed and conquered the world, there is considerable evidence for that, and it's a fairly mundane claim. When you talk about whether or not somebody was a god and walked on water and raised the dead, all of a sudden, even if you had a thousand eyewitness testimonies that were certified that had survived throughout history, that's still not sufficient to prove that that, what, that, that actually happened. So you're being biased because it's a miracle. You don't believe in miracles. You're saying you need more no. evidence than, than something else. Um, uh, I, I, I reject your claim that I, well, I don't know what you mean by being biased, because not all claims are created equal. Um, the claim that you, you have a pet dog doesn't require much evidence at all. But the claim that you have a pet dragon is an extraordinary claim, and extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Are well, you, are you saying, deciding, are you really? You're deciding that it's extra extraordinary. That's what you atheists do. You decide what you think is extraordinary. Well, do you not think it's an extraordinary claim that somebody was a god and performed miracles that defy the known laws of the universe? You don't think that's extraordinary? Well, you... Um, yes or you no? Think, no, I, well, it's not the same as saying you have a dog, but I think the claim that someone took over the world when they were 30 years old is pretty extraordinary, too. Well, okay. okay. I realize that we're, we're two people separated by a common language, but... I would think that when we talk about something that's extraordinary, uh, we, we could at least agree that claiming that somebody was a god and performed miracles that violate the physical laws of the universe is extraordinary, couldn't we? All right, I get your point, but you're deciding that it's not extraordinary evidence. What about prophecies? Isn't that extraordinary evidence that it was predicted before? No. Is, is it a, is, I, I'm, not, I'm not aware um, of, of any sort of prophecy that could possibly serve to, to prove the kind of thing that you're saying. Okay. Well, anyway, I just have one uh, question. If there's no God, where do you think we get universal morals from? Uh, I, I mean, if, if I say uh, uh, something horrible, like torturing babies for your own personal enjoyment is immoral everywhere on the earth at every time, where does that come from if, uh, if there's no God to give us that moral, um, universal moral uh, principle? 
do you want to? What? You did a whole presentation on this. Yeah, I, I've run around giving an entire talk on this, but let me let me try to answer this. Um, you're asserting that your 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 exaggerated claim that you you feel that anybody would consider is immoral, um, torturing babies for your own pleasure is immoral at all places, at all times, etc. And the idea that this is universally considered immoral, you want to know where that comes from? If it doesn't come from Gaul, where does it come from? It can't come from you because why not? People have different opinions about that. Yes, but w the fact that we have different opinions about things doesn't mean that we aren't also the authors of what we consider to be right and wrong. The fact is we are similar creatures in similar circumstances. It's all about, morality is about the interaction of people and the fact that our, our actions have consequences and that those consequences don't just affect ourselves, that they affect other people as well and they affect the kind of society that we live in. And the, the idea that a society that, tor that allows, permits as a moral action the torture of children for one's pleasure would be a better society than one that prohibits it as something that's immoral is is absurd. Yeah, but you're just talking about practicality, like don't do it because sure. it. uh, it's it's not simple consequentialism or it's not simple practicality. We're talking about real consequences. The type of the type of society that we live in would a society be generally better? Um, would the well-being of that society be generally better if we permitted as a moral good the torture of children? I, I, I think that that's absolutely absurd. You think that, you think that other people might not. So. Sure, screw them. Yeah, Th they're okay. immoral. Well, yeah, well, you're saying that, but when I say it's immoral, I know it is because I get it from God. You really? Know, you can't do that. Really? So if your God changes his mind and tomorrow says that torturing little kids for your pleasure is moral, that makes it moral? But God doesn't say that. So that's How do you know? Dashing little babies against the rocks? That's in the Bible. Yeah, in the Old Testament. Oh, oh so you oh. don't pay any attention to the Old Testament? Jesus came and he changed it. You guys don't know anything. You have to do your homework before you start to talk about the Bible. Okay, first of all, uh, n hello, fundamentalist Christian for 25 years, have lectured, was going to be a minister, have taught about the Bible. Um, if you want to talk about Bible knowledge, let's go. Because what you're, basically what you're adhering to is this, this idea that let's chug out the whole Old Testament um, because Jesus came and changed everything. So are you then saying that God was an immoral thug monster and then got better in the New Testament? No, he had, you should know this. He had to do that because that was the only way to ensure that the Messiah would come. But once the Messiah came, then it changed. Oh, so he had to be immoral in order to fix things later. That's why he needed to keep everything pure so that the Messiah would come. So it was for the greater good in the end. I, okay, can you, can you answer me this? Are you being for real? Because, I mean, you're starting to sound like a Poe. Are you honestly presenting this as what, Listen, you, as what if, you sincerely believe, or are you just wasting my time? If they didn't believe, then Jesus wouldn't have come. And that would have been worse overall because everyone would go to hell. <laughs> okay, then the God you believe in is still an immoral monster. Well, I know that it was, I know if, if you take away that context, then it would sound like a bad thing. No, there's but, no, there's no context. There is no context in which slavery becomes moral. There is no context in which killing little kids becomes moral. And by the way, you're arguing not for an objective moral standard that comes from God. You are arguing, in fact, for divine command, which means that you actually believe that it was morally right for God to command those things in the Old Testament because it was necessary. You've just made that argument. So your morality isn't objective, isn't derived from anything moral or true. It's just whatever God says. So when you claim that God can't say that, you can't make that claim because may, for all you know, your God may have a good reason to make it moral to torture babies tomorrow. Do you know more than your God? Look, he did Look, that. Did, if, he didn't do, if he doesn't do that, everybody goes to hell and gets tortured forever. How is that wrong? So he do doesn't that? have power over that? Well, he, look, Adam is the one that decided to betray him, so that wasn't God's fault. It wasn't then, my fault either. God had to do that to bring Jesus. That wasn't God's fault either. What, what does God get to blame for if he's the all-knowing creator of everything? Well, Adam gets the blame because Adam betrayed him. Okay, I didn't. Yeah, but Adam represented you. 
I didn't, I didn't elect Adam as my representative. How is that moral for Adam to be my representative? Well, that is... How is it moral to punish the sins of the offspring for their parents? Is because, it moral just because your God says it's moral? Well, you said you were a Christian, so I know that you're being dishonest when you say, when you pretend like you don't know the answer, because you've obviously studied it. I, I, I know a lot of different answers. I'm asking you for your opinion, because to me, this is a contradictory position. What would you have said if I asked you back when you were a Christian? I, it doesn't matter. I want to know. I, I can tell you, I would have given answers very much like yours. And then I woke up and realized how absolutely absurd those were, they were and how I was sitting around making excuses for immorality and disguising morality. Well, uh, if it's just making excuses, then that's your opinion, but oh, it's that's just, the way the Bible is, and you know it as well as I do. Uh, better, evidently. Anyway, I just want to leave off with one last thing, which is um, the very best proof for God um, you haven't even discussed on your show, such as... Um, well, actually, the, since, um, we've uh, discussed the... every, since we've discussed every proposed proof such for God... Such as Chris Langan. Oh, re did you hang up? Good, because that saves me a whole lot of time. Such as Chris Langan. I I'm starting to think that that was just a poem, especially... Yeah, that's the Old Testament... Yeah, that's Well, the other like thing is that this whole, oh, that's just your opinion, which, of course, there was that somebody did like a South Parky version of, of this where I sit here looking mighty buff, I'll add, uh, just saying, well, that's just your opinion and hanging up over and over again. No, it's not just an individual's opinion. Um, you, I, I happen to think that morality is something that relates to the well-being of society that we can learn and discover more and more about and that we do and have and that by learning more about how our actions affect the world around us, we can then improve our actions. And you think that morality is just some guy's say-so, and that it's okay and even morally necessarily necessary and right for him to advocate horrific things in order to pave the way for a Jesus later on. Um, I don't see how that becomes moral. All you're really doing is saying that it's okay to be immoral if you ultimately have some good goal to it. Um, the road to hell being paved with good intentions kind of leaps to mind. But I don't know if you wanted to beat up on him some more. No, that's all right. That's what I thought.